Hello again coach, welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk to you about planning for a season. Before talking about this process it is worth revisiting the advice given in the previous video about goal setting for the season. In that video I taught you about how for many children's coaches it makes sense to create goals for a season that are based on principles. This allows for both a strong and flexible goals that are adaptable to the changes that will inevitably occur over a year. If you completed these goals, then you've already started planning. Great work. Before talking about the process of planning, however, it is worth talking about why we should plan. You may have noticed I have just said that things will change over a year. So if they're going to change over a year, why bother planning? Planning is difficult time-consuming, inefficient. Crucially, it is often unrecognised in the allocation of time and effort for either paid or unpaid coaches. It all seems a bit pointless, doesn't it? So, why plan? Well, I think there are four key reasons. One, planning raises expectations of both coach and player. It therefore provides a template against which reflection can occur after delivery. Two, planning helps us to cope with an unknown future. Three, planning helps us to stay on track, even when events may want to take us off track. And finally, perhaps most importantly, four, planning requires coaches to talk to our fellow coaches. It causes coaches to think critically about what they are trying to do. In short, planning helps coaches to get better just as much as players. So that's why we should plan. The next question is, how should we do it? Well, as I've already suggested, if you've engaged in thinking about your goals for the season, you've already started planning. The question is, how do we take these goals and turn them into reality? A key concept that I've written about with my colleagues is called nested planning. The overall idea of this process is a bit like Russian dolls, that is, the smallest Russian doll always fits within the largest Russian doll. Likewise, research shows us coaching is most effective when the smallest coach athlete or coach coach or coach committee interactions are nested within the overall goals that are being worked towards. In practicality, the way we have seen this work best is when three levels of planning occur. Macro, meso and micro. So the micro, or the shortest time frame, for example, a coaching session, is nested within the meso, maybe two to three months out of a year, which is in turn nested within the macro, maybe one to two years, as we've been showing in this diagram. My colleague, Mike Ashford, is going to talk to you about micro planning in the next video. Therefore, I will use this video to talk about macro and meso planning. At a macro level of planning, you can think about where you would like to be in one to two years. If you have engaged in your vision, mission, strategy level of thinking, and then developed some annual goals based on this, you have done most of the work. The example shown here reflects how this might work in a well-resourced talent development setting. If you don't have this sort of time or resource, you would dial back your expectations. The really key issue about this level of planning is that it engages key stakeholders such as fellow coaches and committee members so that a shared view is created and agreed on. At the meso level of planning, you would start to break the macro period of time, in most cases a season, into manageable chunks. Typically this might be about eight weeks at a time. Remember though, don't become too specific. Your plan still needs to allow for flexibility as human behaviour and development is rarely straightforward. As much as being flexible is important, so is being realistic. One key component of meso planning is being aware of the resources that you have. Often the key resource is time. For example, in my club, I am probably with the boys I coach for about three hours a week for about 25 to 28 weeks of the year. On the basis we use all the weeks, and everyone turns up every week, not very likely, 
That is about 75 hours. About half of this time will be in games against other teams. In total, this is not very much time. It is important, therefore, that you make the best use of the time that you have. Plan for where your focus is going to be. Will it be technical, tactical, physical, mental, social, some combination of all of all of these? Returning to the video about knowing your sport can help here. Ultimately, don't expect too much too quickly. Learning new skills takes time and opportunity. Moving on to something new every week won't help the player. Once you've made a meso plan, try to stick to it in all coaching environments. This helps create a focus for the players and for you as a coach. It can prevent instruction and feedback overload, particularly at competitions. Planning is not an easy process. It requires practice and patience. I have covered some important principles around planning at the macro and meso level here, but there are quite a few of them. To help you in learning and implementing these ideas, I have created some templates within the study guide that goes with this MOOC. I hope you find them useful. However, if they don't work for you and you think you have better templates, then have the confidence to use them. I don't claim mine are perfect. Best of luck with your macro and meso planning. Remember to follow with the video around session planning to get the full nested planning idea. Bye for now and good luck.